Hello everybody, Chris Van Meter here with Jeff Hoagland, and we are bringing you the second installment of our Hex Shards of Fate Primal Dawn set review. Uh, make sure you check out uh, video number one in our playlist for the blood uh, review, but right now we're going to be doing Diamond. Uh, so our first card up on the chopping block here is Adamanthian Captain. It's a three cost single blood, two three within power. So it's just a th three cost two three, six cost four six. Um, I think this is just going to be just a good card that you're going to play in all of your limited decks, but never see any playing constructed. Yep, I agree with that assessment. Bad human is bad. Yep. Alright, so next we have Air Evolution, which is a sweet uncommon that I think is going to see play a lot uh, in limited, maybe even constructed. Three costs, single diamond threshold, basic action, target troop you control gets flight, and all troops you, you control with flight get a permanent plus one plus one. Yep. And again, the the flight buff that you're giving the target troop is permanent as well. So the fact that those modifiers hang around, again, like you said, might make this constructed playable in the right deck. You know, it might even be a deck that's just like chock full of a bunch of flight troops to begin with, just as like playing it as an anthem effect. Yeah, it's just an anthem effect, and you can make one of your other troops jump. I mean, you can even just play it on something that already has flight just to get the anthem effect out of it. There's a bunch of like one and two, one and two cost troops with flight. I could see that as a deck. All right, battle, battle chant, two costs, single diamond threshold, constant chant. When a constant enters play under your control, troops you control get plus one, plus one this turn. Similar to the blood one that we saw earlier where you got to regrow a creature. This is one that pumps your team. I like this one much better than that other one. Not only just in a deck that has a whole bunch of constants, um, but it's just like a one shot plus one, plus one that you can threaten to, to, to pump your troops later on. Yeah, and I mean, like, if you're playing four of these in a deck, like, maybe there's a world where this sees constructed play, because the second one gives 2-2 two, two, and the third one gives 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, and then there's even, like, we'll see Rally of Kings later on that's uh, uh, just an actual anthem that will work very, very well with these. Yep. All right, so our next one, we've got Benediction. So two costs, single diamond threshold, quick action, and power. Up to one target card gets invincible this turn. So for four cost, you can give two cards invincible. This is definitely an interesting combat trick in limited, and might even be worthwhile in constructed if you wanted to try and save something. Um, I feel like yeah, it saves your guy from targeted removal as well as something like uh, you know a heat wave or an extinction. So mm -hmm. for that reason, it might be playable as like a trick in your aggressive deck. Yeah, and even then, like at the extinction point, you'll have four resources available so they're just like extinction you're like all right save two guys that's a pretty huge swing yeah definitely especially when they're, they're relying on leaning on that four drop sleeper to like stabilize the game yeah uh, and it's only an uncommon so it's one of those cards that you're going to see unlimited a lot uh, all right bright moon auger five cost double diamond threshold two four coyotal with prophecy when it enters play the next troop in your deck gets plus two plus four uh I will never play this card in Constructed, and I will be unhappy to play in Limited. Five costs is just way too much. Yeah, stats are unimpressive, and like the biggest problem with the Prophecy cards is that like, there's no guarantee when you're actually going to see the payoff from them. I agree. <laughs> All right, Canyon Runner. Uh, it's a four cost, and there are quite a few of these cards, cards like this in the set, where it's a troop with a socket, uh, and when it enters play or dies, the next troop in your deck gets all socketed powers of this, which is kind of cool because you get like a double trigger on it. Four cost single diamond, three three. Um, I don't think this is going to see very much play in constructed, but I think this card is actually pretty sweet in limited. So you're just like, you know, a four cost three three flyer if you're diamond sapphire, and then when it comes into play or dies, it just like gives the next troop in your deck flying, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, just like a string of evasive creatures essentially. Yep. Or, you know, you get to have it to have Life Drain or Swift Strike um, you know, or Speed if you're in Ruby Diamond. So, like, a 3-3 Speed for 4 is pretty sweet, and then it gives, like, your next creature speed, and then if they kill it, it even gives another creature speed. That's that's a lot of aggression. Yep. All right, next we have Cheery Songbird. Pretty sweet art. 4 cost, single diamond threshold, 2-3 Flyer. Um, which is already playable and limited in my opinion. Uh, and once per turn, when you gain health, this gets plus two, plus two this turn. Uh, do you think this is, has the potential to see, see play in Constructed, or 
Is it just not, no, not enough of a body? I'd be, I'd be really surprised if this uh, constructed play just like gets outclassed by you know most of the vampires. Like you don't you need a consistent way to gain life for it to be anywhere close to reasonable. And cards that consistently gain life generally aren't good and constructed. Yeah. Although one thing that I think is sweet is if you have a creature with swift strike and life drain, you will gain that life before normal combat damage happens, and this will get the bonus for it. So I could see this in a deck with like Grim Harvester and Limited as being pretty sweet. Yep. All right. Up next, cleanse. Three costs, single diamond. Revert all cards. It's interesting. This, uh, this is actually a pseudo answer to Edge of Fate Sorceress giving things spell shield. Yes. So that's that's where my mind goes. Like, what are how are we fixing the problems that we have in the current current constructed format with the best decks? And that's really good at that this also is an answer to polymorph dingler or mass polymorph dingler oh geez i hate getting hit by that card yeah that's pretty sweet yeah i definitely think that this has reserves potential and constructed yeah it, it also like stops any shift shenanigans if somebody has shifted something um you know if they happen to like cripple your troop or use like incubation webs you can use this to revert it uh, I think that if I it think turns that, a Reese off, yeah, it turns off Reese, which is real impre important. I think that you can use this to turn a Scarn back into a one one, or just make a Gastrol back into a one one. Yeah, it definitely works with Gastrol. I'm pretty sure it works with Scarn as well. Uh, it also can revert the bonus from Fierce Warlord on all their one drops, um, which I mean. I think we're probably still. Yeah, well, I think we're probably is, still losing it, to just like the. This card's really good against the Ruby Wild aggressive deck that I just wrote about recently because it hits Gas Troll, Scarn, and Quashridge Tusker. Yeah, hitting Tuskers, man. Yeah, this, I think this card is going to have a lot of reserve potential, both in, in constructed and in limited. Yeah, man, that's pretty sweet. All right, Cloud Speaker, two cost, single diamond, O four, uh, basic one shot two resources target troop you control with flight gets plus two plus one this is interesting because it very easily can hold the ground down against the aggressive opponents but it'd be pretty sick to just curve like this into vampire princess and then just make her a four four yep that even beats vampire kings yeah or make your vampire king just like what is it a five five yep I don't know. Do you think this card has has potential constructed? I haven't had a chance to play any of the Blood Diamond decks with vampires. So the the problem with this in a Blood Diamond deck, I feel like, is that um, it's probably worse than Exarch of the Egg a lot of the time. Just because like Exarch of the Egg is effectively a removal spell, it can often trade up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. I think that um, I don't know. This this might have potential unlimited. I'll have to play with it. Like these, these zero power, like the zero attack creatures are really tough to evaluate when they're not like repeatable abilities. So like only getting one shot out of this might not make it good enough for limited. Like you just can't squeeze enough value out of it. All right, Cosmic Shaman. So here we have a six costs, single diamond, five, five, major and minor sockets. When an Ender's player dies, the next troop in your deck gets all socketed powers of this. That's, that's pretty sweet. So this could just be yeah. like... Spell spell shield you, life drain. You could put flight rhino on it too. If you're yeah, in a, you if you're in a three quarter. Yeah, or you could even just do like spell shield, and gain life equal to its power attack when it comes into play, and then like it gives your next troop that, and then if they happen to kill it, then it gives another troop that. That seems yeah, pretty Yeah, diamond sweet. wild. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think this is a snap first pick in limited, um, and might even might even have some constructed potential as you know just like a, si a, a, re a reserve card that you can tailor the gems to whatever you need it. Yeah, that's fair. I feel like it probably gets out outclassed by Azure Fate Sorceress in constructed, but you know a lot of cards get outclassed by that one. Yeah, we're... that card is just way too good. <laughs> yes. All right, here's one of my picks for most impactful constructed card uh, it's going to be dance macabre five cost triple diamond threshold basic action transform all troops in your crypt into phantoms and put them into play this card is gas really you think so yeah it's very very good 
There, th- mm. Keep that in mind. There is an anthem when we get to it, Rally of Kings. Okay. On top of that, you know, if you're playing... Uh, so there's a wild card in the set uh, that we'll get to at some point. Oh, Ru- Rune or um, Hierophant that just triggers off of all these coming into play. Plus, like, we're going to want to play just, like, a bunch of idiots to trigger it the first time that we play them. I'm, I'm going to go on a slight... A slight often here i played against a blood diamond deck i was playing grant's gifts in a gauntlet the other day i actually like, played that earlier today and beat, beat them to finish out my 5-2 with azure cannon but like that deck the, the opponent's deck was really sweet it felt like it was one of those decks that's like man this is probably missing like one or two cards to make it like a real contender and like this with grant's gifts generates a ton of value like Grant's gifts turns all your guys into zombies that have died, and then those zombies could get thrown away, and then you could turn them into phantoms, which could die and get turned back into zombies with Grant's gift again. Yeah, that that is pretty sweet. Just like total but, value train of two twos and one ones. Yeah, like I know that Wordle was working on a wild diamond deck, and Infamous Neo played some of it on stream uh, la- before the set came out on the test server while we were having some maintenance. And there were some games where he was just like Howling Brave into Runier Hierophant into like explore, explore, put a bunch of stuff into my crypt, chump all of your guys, play a couple more, cre- you know, play like Ilgen's Parade, chump your guys, and then dance macabre, get like seven, seven phantoms, make my Runier, Runier Hierophant, you know, like a 12 12, and just like, all right, I'm gonna keep attacking you. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, I think that, that this is the kind of card that is. I don't want to say a game changer, but it gives late game to the like the go wide strategies as protection against the sweepers. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's definitely powerful. Like, there's a reason why this is a triple diamond threshold. They don't want everyone playing this card. Exactly. I think this is this is one card to keep an eye out for. I'm definitely going to try and break that card myself. All right, Duskwing Shepherd. Uh, it's a two cost single diamond, one three flight, which is good stats on its own. Uh, and you can sacrifice it to gain a threshold of your choice. Possible enabler in a five-color deck that could exist. Yeah, I could see it in a five-color deck. I'm definitely going to play this in every in every limited deck that I have. Like, you know, it's going to be a one-three flyer for two, which is never something that you want to look down on, especially in this game where you have these permanent effects that will just stay there. Like that just changes how you know, some of these early crappy creatures just like actually get better when you can permanently give them you know a plus one plus one or you know plus two plus one or something yep like you could just curve this into the o4 that we looked at earlier and then the next turn just you know make this uh what a a three four like how good is a a two cost three four all right exemplar of the awakened this is another good card Three cost diamond necrotic. When this or another necrotic you control dies, all necrotic you control get plus one plus one, and it's just a three cost two three. Seems okay. Um, actually, uh, another deck that I played against in a gauntlet recently, which had some five two finishes uh, by the same player, was a uh, diamond ruby necrotic aggressive deck, and it seems like something like this could be very good in that. Yeah, I think that they are, they just keep building these necrotic cards um, that eventually there's going to be a critical mass of them to where a deck's going to be playable. Yep. Alright, next we have Flash Paw Howler. Four cost diamond, 3-3 three, three, quick troop. Uh, you can activate your charge powers as though they were quick. Oh, so, I said, mentioned earlier that I always scroll through and find all the removal. The second thing I do is scroll through and find all the creatures that I can play on my opponent's turn. Yeah, this is very, very interesting. Being able to use your charge powers as though they were quick. Like, I, it's probably not good, but like, there, there's part of me that wants to at least once, like, my opponent attacks, I flash this in and then activate Rutherford Banks and reanimate something and, like, block two things as a surprise. Yeah. What champion powers do we gain an advantage from by using the quick action? Well, that's 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 where the trick comes in to find out. So I did get some clarification that um, the once per turn clause on champion powers is once truly once per turn. So I can use it once on my turn and then once on my opponent's turn. 
So, oh, really? That's very good. So if you have the cheaper champion powers where you're able to you know, use them in successive turns, then you might be able to get some benefit out of it. So, like, Winter Moon is cheap, but I don't think it's what we're looking for. Urgnox cheap, but I don't think it's what we're looking for. So, like, really we're going to be looking at these, you know, six, or, the, like, the three-cost champion powers that might be something that we want to use multiple times. It, maybe, like, I I'm just, just I, not I, I quite sure. I completely, uh, completely agree. You know, Winter Moon, you know, there's a lot of times we just, like, have extra charges in the late game and just, like, can't use them fast enough, so I don't think it's completely useless there. Yeah, I mean, and it's and it's a only it's only a single diamond threshold Koyoto, so you could definitely play it in the the triple shard Winter Moon decks. Yep, it it is pretty sweet that it lets you use it my turn and then your turn. Yep, yeah, agreed. All right, so next we have Force of the Tomb, and here's that card I alluded to earlier in the Blood video. Uh, four cost single diamond, once per turn single diamond when a necrotic troop you control deals damage to a champion. This is in your hand play it for free and get 2-1-1 phantoms. I think this card is going to be a limited all-star and might even have potential in constructed. Yeah, I mean, an aggressive an aggressive necrotic deck that all of a sudden, you know, turn turn 2 even, right? Like you hit them, you play a 1 cost necrotic on 1, turn 2, play your diamond threshold and hit them and get 2-1-1s. One yep. It's very, very good. And those phantoms are like actual cards that will go to the crypt when things die. That you can bring back with Dance Macabre later, etc., etc. Tim's your dog. All right, Grace of Tianos. Here's another sweet rare. Three cost, double diamond threshold, basic action. Target troop you control gets plus two, plus two flight, and when this dies, revert it, put it into play. I think this card's real good. I I, I can see this card seeing constructed play. Yeah, this is just like going to be a snap first pick and limited. Uh, and might even see some playing constructed like just yeah, you have to be you have to be a little bit careful to make sure like your target's not getting like time rippled or killed in response but like every time this card resolving is going to be more than reasonable for you yeah it's going to be real good especially since it's not like when this dies revert it put it into your hand it just like puts it back into play correct yep just want to put this on something with the sweet come into play ability I can't wait till they make a mold drifter in this game. It's just gonna break everything. All right, so we've got Grievous Phantom, seven cost, double diamond, threshold, five five flyer. When it enters play, transform each phantom you control into Grievous Phantom. So it makes all of your one one phantoms into five five phantoms. So, so this is the lady you want to bring to the dance. This is the lady you want to bring to the dance. Grievous Phantom will be your your date to the dance. I don't think that this is has potential to see play and constructed. But, Don't tell my Johnny that. Come on now. <laughs> but I'm definitely interested in trying to play this in, in, in draft. Just like a seven cost five five flyer. Like this is just a dragon that does other things. This is a dragon that turns all of your phantoms into dragons. Yeah, like not to mention like force of tomb is a common. So like you're you're gonna have phantoms in your draft deck if you find this. Yeah, and there's even just like once we get to it, uh, there's just like yeah hereafter just a, a one cost. You just get to transform a troop into a phantom and put it into play. That's a common. Hallowed rating. It's two cost, single diamond, constant. When it enters play, gain a threshold of your choice. When you gain a threshold, gain one life. As far as constructed goes, I'm not sure I see this card being better than, say, shard call, unless, of course, these constants come into play matter cards actually are powerful enough to see play. Well, it also just like you play it, you gain a life, but each shard you play from then on out also gains you a life. So like one of the things that we, we've learned from Magic in the last you know, two or three years is that as the cards start to get more powerful in a game, things that prolong the game and give you extra, extra draw steps start to gain value because the cards are just so powerful it's worth it. So like incidental life gain on cards and even some dedicated life gain on cards are just getting more and more playable in Magic with every set that comes out because the cards just are getting more and more powerful. And I think that's something to keep in mind when we're evaluating these hex cards is it's, you know, when do we get to the point where something like this is worth playing because it will more than likely give us, you know, plus one card over the course of a game because we'll just gain enough life. Yep. All right, next we have Hereafter, I was saying before. One cost, quick action, revert and transform a troop in a crypt into a phantom and put it directly into play under your control. So, 
you're gonna rise against something nope I'm gonna grab it and make it a phantom being a quick action this card's pretty sweet anything that's uh, that's quick speed that can create troops I think is worth looking at in my book yeah I I definitely don't see this seeing uh, main deck constructed play but I think this is like plenty reserves play reserves playable if the uh, crypt interaction decks are seeing play yeah I think this is definitely playable in in limited um, troops are gonna be dying quite a bit uh, as well as being able to you know like if they play an ethereal caller you can snag what they target um, you know any of these things that are going to target uh, troops that are in crypts this is going to be able to counteract them but at the very least it just makes a one one flyer yeah I mean like we talked about you know death liturgy that gets countered by this card essentially because it removes the target mm-hmm all right, here we have what I think is going to be the most powerful card in the set, High Infinitrix. So there's a lot of things going on here, so let's go ahead and break it down. Four cost double diamond threshold, and it's an 0-1. But it has three different abilities that all have shift. So plus one, plus one in flight, plus one, plus one in steadfast, plus one, plus one in life drain. And then when you play a necrotic, you may revert this. So baseline, we have a four cost, three, four, flying, steadfast, life drain troop. At that point, oh right, it has all of its base powers until you shift them, right? Yes. Yeah, so at that point, cut it off. I think that card is exceptional. Just yep. a three four for four flight life drain steadfast. But then you get to this point where you're able to shift some of them off, and then play another necrotic, to, and then you just get to revert it back to being a three four. Yep. And like you know, you have the the revert champion as well to get even additional uses out of this when you're not playing a bunch of necrotics out. Exactly. On top of that, it's not unique. You can just curve oh, high okay. infinitrix into high infinitrix, and you just—I mean, you, you could—it's uh, just insane. <laughs> you, you could even, you know, if you have multiple of these in play, just keep stacking them up on the same guy. Yes, the problem is, is that like, I guess it's a may on the revert, but like when you revert it, the the ones will go away that you move on to the high infinitrix, so you're not like getting a ton of value of moving things onto the high infinitrix because when it gets reverted it'll lose the things that you shifted onto it um but even then just like three four flight steadfast life drain like that card is very very good yep. like v vampire king and vampire princess are just insane against like the aggressive decks and can pressure your opponent's hand like this card is just in, in the same vein in my opinion you're not pressuring your opponent's hand but like this threatens to end the game much faster than the vampires do yep and just another troop with great fashion sense that we see here in Primal Dawn. All right, next up we have Mesa Totemist. Three cost, one four, and power. When you gain health, this gets plus three and swift strike this turn. So one thing that I think is really interesting about this is that the flying the bird that we looked at earlier specifically says it only gets buffed once per turn when you gain health this can keep getting three power every time when you gain health on a turn yeah and within power it's a six cost two eight that gets plus six when you gain health yep. and i mean like you we mentioned hollowed radiance earlier like if you're in the market of playing hollowed radiance this card's probably playable in your deck every time you play a shard you can pop it up yeah that definitely is one of those cards that enables these when you gain health thing yeah man Card's gonna be sweet and limited. I think, I think that hollowed like hollowed radiance is gonna be a deck in draft. Yeah, it seems like it. You know, common's a good thing to have a theme on. All right, here's another card that goes well with hollowed radiance. Just a five cost, three one flight. When it dies, you get a phantom for each different threshold you have, and then you put them into play. Wow. Yeah. Just like if you're getting <laughs> probably three's the line where this really becomes good, but if you're getting anything more than three, it seems great. I mean, I feel like even at two, this is fine, right? Like just. A five cost three one flyer that makes two one ones when it dies. Yeah, that's fair. I mean that that might actually even be constructed playable. I I agree. I I, I was I should have prefixed. I think I was getting three or more makes this card constructed playable. Oh, I agree. Yeah. It's probably less than that. And then the best part is you can take all of them to a dance after you're done. You can you can take them to a dance, or you can just play the seven drop and make them five fives. <laughs> All right, here we have Moon Warden. These these one drop Coyotes that have 
multiple shard abilities are pretty sweet. I like them a lot. Just a 1-1 one, one for 1. Uh, if you have Wild, 1 and Exhaust, plus 1, plus 1 to a troop. If you have Diamond, 1 and Exhaust, uh, another troop gets Flight. I don't Sapphire. Or Sapphire. I don't think this is going to be Constructed playable, but this is going to be very good and limited if you're able to use either of the abilities. Yeah, this card uh, is it's just worse than Stargazer in most situations. Yeah, like, uh, it, it reminds me of... Uh, like the the guild mages from magic so like there there are, are cycles in magic where you have like a one drop one one and then they have two colored activated abilities that are either allied or enemy color to whatever the base color of the card is and when you have cards like that the only ones that end up being constructed playable um, usually either draw cards bounce things or deal damage to creatures or players so yeah like, something that like directly generates card advantage yeah, so like in Hex, we have the the one that lets you loot or gain life is like the one that's quite playable um, in Constructed. Um, e even the one that taps things is like borderline playable and limited in Set 3 just because like Diamond Sapphire wasn't like a very supported archetype with all the cards. I think it gets better when Set 4 gets thrown into the mix and can go along with this deck. Uh, plus, there are a lot of colorless cards and cards like Hallowed. Uh, Essence or whatever the constant was that we talked about earlier that will unlock thresholds for you so you can activate their abilities. Let's see here. Alright, Pale Harvester is up next. This is kind of a creepy art. It's a three cost, one diamond threshold, one two, and you shift ability, you can pay two and exhaust it to gain health equal to its power. So again, another card that allows us to start gaining health. Uh, to turn on some of the, the cards in set 4 that benefit from that. This is also just like a 1-4 for 3 that you can gain health every turn. Might actually be playable in reserves and constructed. Yeah, against like, you know, really aggressive decks like, you know, I, I'd rather my Fentio gain life than put Tarantula into the aggressive decks deck a lot of the time. Yeah, with this, this costing 2 to activate it uh, is kind of a little bit of a drawback, but against those aggressive decks here are you know, swapping cards with your reserves to make your deck just like very lean and can interact much earlier. So usually shouldn't be much of a problem. I think this is a card to look out for uh, if you're looking for a life gain for sure. This is a card you talked about the bird and even the uh, the coyote that gets yep. power when you gain life, like swift strike. So this triggers and then can pump those other things, or then they trigger before they deal damage. Yeah. So this is. Um, just a, a two cost double diamond threshold two one life drain sh switch strike this is uh there's oh what's the card called meadow grain something so there was a card a magic card in lower one was just white white for a two two for strike life link so like those types of cards are always always playable whether it be limited or constructed in my opinion i think this is just going to be a great card against the aggressive decks if you can support the the double diamond like i think grim harvester was like borderline playable uh but not because it costs three and i think this card is just going to be playable in both constructed and limited yep oh you mean uh pale harvester the one we just looked at right no grim harvester is the the blood diamond three three cost two two lifelink swift strike that, that's in okay. set that's in set three that you can sack a creature to drain yep yeah, I think that card is just like borderline constructed playable. If it costs two mana, or if it costs two resources, it would have been playable. Alright, here we have Prairie Trapper, which is a sweet card. Five cost, double diamond, quick troop, one five. When it enters play, void target attacking troop with power equal to or less than the number of Coyotal you have. So it's going to be able to snag at least, at least a, a one power, a one attack troop by itself, but if you have more Coyota, then you can snag some more. I think this card is going to be very playable and limited, but I don't think it's going to be, be very good enough for Constructed. Yep, I agree. The, the threshold could be prohibitive too, because most of your Coyota decks are going to be multi-shard, or at least dual shard, and then the effect, like, it's not powerful on its own, so... Yeah. The one, the one cool thing about this is if you ever get to play it for free off of an Indigo, that'd be kind of sweet. Yep. Then again, that can be said for a lot of cards. So here we have a sweet removal spell, Quell. Two costs, one diamond. Target troop gets defensive. 
I think this card is exceptional and limited and might even be playable and constructed. Yeah, I suppose. I guess this is this is like almost unconditional removal for for diamond. Like it's got drawback just like Martyr does, but against a lot of decks this drawback's gonna be gonna be better. Yeah. Like this is much better against an Urgnock deck than Martyr is. The only the only downside I see that could keep this from being like uh, really great and constructed is that basics a lot worse than quick. Yeah, basics a lot worse than quick, and this card is just like very bad against cards like Fenteo, Azure Fate, and Untunneled Reese, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's the upside for it against the uh, aggressive decks is, is is pretty sweet. All right, what's next? Radiant Physician. So I think that this is a vanity card for somebody. I don't know who. But yeah, this... I was going to say, it looks like we took someone's photo and put it on this card. Yeah, it almost looks like his head's photoshopped on. Um, just a two-cost, uh, single diamond threshold, 2-2. Two, two. When you play a constant, it gets plus one, plus one. At the start of your turn, if you control three or more constants with different names, draw a card and gain three health. That is extremely powerful and seems like a build-around-me card. Yeah. Definitely. Like, and, and again, the buff is permanent, so like this card's getting consistently larger. You know, even just like you know, the next card we're gonna look at here, Rally of the Kings. You curve your Radiant Physician into Rally of the Kings, and all of a sudden you've got a four-four that you played on turn two. Yeah. Speaking of Rally, this is another highly impactful card for Constructed. This is going to be one of the best cards in Limited. I don't know how many times I have lost to my opponent in set 3 draft because they martyred their own creature and just gave themselves an anthem. Um, but this is just a 3 cost, plus 1, plus 1, double diamond threshold with Empower, which means late game, it's a 6 cost, plus 2, plus 2, which is extremely good. Yep. Again, flexibility on curve is, is important. Yeah, just with the way the troops are designed and the, with the pacing of this game anthem effects are just extremely powerful and i think we're going to see that now this card's printed as we move forward like being able to destroy a, con a constant is going to be even more important now than it's it's ever been in hex in my opinion yep. all right righteous air four cost three three double diamond threshold steadfast when it enters play revert and transform target opposing necrotic into a phantom Gain control of that troop. So this is this, this is some powerful hate. Yeah. So we had the racist bunny that is just terrible, and then we have Ghostbuster here, righteous air that is busted. So like being able to just kill one of their necrotic, make it a phantom, and then gain control of it is it's just insane. I, I can just imagine the look on my opponent's face in draft when he just plays his high infinitrix puffs out his chest and I just steal it with righteous air and make it a 1-1 one, one. yep they have to deal with or it gets to jump block one of their things like this card might even be constructed playable as, as like a reserves card against like the, the the red aggressive decks have a lot of necrotic in them yep definitely they play the uh, the 2-1 that makes things not be able to block and then uh, the yeah, speed like Rip, Rip, ripper um, death mass assailant the death mass skip that's the one Man, and it's just a three-three steadfast for four. This is so. In this reminds me of, um, God, what's his name? The vampire, the the, the slayer, and in the original Innistrad, like the three and a white three-two that killed a vampire werewolf or a zombie yep. when it came into play. Like this reminds me of that card. And in in like Innistrad Limited, that card was a snap first pickable card. Like this card is just going to be snap first pick and draft. Anytime you have the potential to make something a flame tongue cavalry, it's just very good. Yep. Well, similar to our spider, here we have two costs, vanilla three two for one. These cards are just all gonna be very good. Like curve fillers, like if you're in your you know, especially like the blood diamond decks where you're wanting to have troops in your crypt and their power actually affects things that you do, like this card's gonna be great. Maybe playable and constructed with a necrotic? Yeah. Maybe like if an aggressive deck is looking for that kind of filler on curve. All right, so here we have what I think is going to be the best combat trick in limited, shield bash. 
one cost, single diamond, quick action. Empower, target troop gets plus one, plus two this turn. So it's one for one, two, two for two, four. That seems very good. To this, this card empowers really easily. Yeah, I think this this might actually have the potential to see playing constructed. Like it's it's a combat yeah, it's a it's, it's a combat trick to, you know, like either trade your creature up or have it survive combat. Um, but it also is just this this feels like it's going to counter like almost every burn spell that's trying to be used as a removal spell. Crackling bolt, burn, scorch, you name it. Alright, next we have Soul Slaver. Uh, two cost, two two, double diamond threshold, steadfast. If you gain health this turn, exhaust, create a phantom, put it into play. Steadfast, so it can attack and still activate. Yeah, this this common enchantment or this common constant that gives gives you a threshold when you play a shard, and then gaining you life. Like it, it just feel, feels like it's getting better and better with all, yep. all these cards and, that I'm seeing. And it gains you a life just when you play it, right? Yep. Yeah. Alright, Spirit Howl, three costs, single diamond, quick action. Ready a troop, it gets plus one, plus one this turn. Prophecy, the next troop in your deck gets plus one, plus one instead fast. This is an expensive trick. It is. I feel like... I feel like I, I'll play this card in my draft deck and never be happy about it. Like it, it seems like one of those cards where it's like, almost every time you play it, it's going to be sweet, but those situations are going to be so corner case because of the cost that it's just not going to come up often enough for me to want to start it every time. Yep. All right, here we have Starlight Pathfinder. Three cost, single diamond threshold, swift strike, two two. At the start of your turn, if this is prophesized and in your deck, reveal this, put this into your hand. That seems weird. One thing that's that's really interesting about this is the fact that it reveals itself before it gets added into your hand. Because that's definitely not necessary in Hex. I agree. Um, the best use case for this is it probably constructed where if you can get this card prophesized, then every time it dies, you can Winter Moon it back in, and then it's basically put this card back in your hand with text draw card on it yeah or, or even if you yeah you just like every time it dies because like the winter moon adding draw card is technically prophesized right N no it's not so it's it's a oh. lot of setup work so like yeah. you have to get it prophesized but then once it's prophesized if you have winter moon this card is never dying if you get it prophesized yeah that seems like a lot of work and it's definitely a lot of work. So basically, is 2-2 two, two Swift Strike for 3 playable? Probably not, so this card's probably not playable. Yeah, not constructed. It's definitely playable and limited, but I'm not like going to first pick it. This, on the other hand, I will first pick and limited. 3 cost, single diamond, necrotic mage, 2-1, flight, swift strike, shift on both of the abilities. Yep, and is the, the revert champion is one that's still playable and limited, right? Yes. Like, that seems really powerful with this. Hey, just to, just to give you an idea, um, in set three, there's a three cost two two swift strike with shift and a three cost two two flight with shift, that were that were both exceptional. Yep. <laughs> this is just the same card mixed together as as a two one. Power creep already. Yeah. Right. Here we have totem of Lanopa. Anytime we have a one cost two one, I got to take a look at it. Uh, single diamond threshold. You can pay three prophecy. The next troop in your deck gets one of the following at random: plus one, plus one, flight, life drain, steadfast, or swift strike. I think this card actually is very good. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think you know again, you want to look at the base text of the card and say, is this something we're in the market for? And there's there's probably an aggressive deck that wants a two one for one, and then you know in the scary event that your aggressive deck goes long, you can put as many resources as you have into this card every turn. Yeah, things that are resource dumps always have potential. Um, because it has this extra ability, it might be even worthwhile taking pretty highly and limited, just as a way to like pressure your opponent. And if once they stop the pressure, then you just start prophesizing like all of the troops in your deck all the time. Um, 
But yeah, and it's a totem. That's so it's not like an actual like I want to say human, but it's not like an actual being. It's just like a living totem. It's like a construct. Yep. Which is kind of cool. And then we're going to trap the totem right away. Yeah, we're going to attack, trap the totem. One cost, quick action, three damage to target attacking or blocking troop. I think this is playable in both constructed and limited. Yeah, definitely. Like, this is fan fantastic reserves against the aggressive decks. Like, being able to trade one one for one on resources and tempo, like, that's huge. Yeah, it's just very good against any of the aggressive decks. It also it just feels like this kills most troops that we're attacking with, right? Like kills azure fate when they don't have spell shield it kills you know most of the early drops um i mean like it even kills hypnoscientists it kills phoenix it kills thunder pie elder or thunderfield elder like this card just seems great yep. it's worth noting too that like you can use this when you're attacking into things too like repel is just an attacking creature this can damage blocking troops as well yeah that's pretty sweet yeah you can like co combo this with like you know you attack your tutu and in into their fenteo they block it and you're like bam your fenteo's dead Yep. It's not a chump check, it's a get you check. Yeah. Alright, Venerable Mystic. One cost, one two. One sacrifice this, destroy target constant. I think this is a card that's going to see play in a lot of reserves. Yep, I agree. There are a lot of sweet again, constants. Like, you, can, you can put it out there and just keep poking them for one until you need a stability. Yep. Kill that Zentos Malice. Alright, here we have Whirlwind Scout. Three costs, single diamond, two two, flight. Quotal Allegiance, when this enters play, gain 3 health. I think on stats alone, it's just a 3 cost 2-2 two, two flyer. This is playable and limited. But anytime you get to gain 3 life, it's going to be gravy. I feel like the Quotal Allegiance is going to make it not good enough for Constructed. Yep, I agree. And the last card we have... There's um, a lot of text on this card. There's a lot of text, and Diamond gets a lot of good cards in this set. So here we have William Rowan. Two costs, double diamond threshold, three two. Stats alone, it's just a two cost, three two. That's definitely good. When it enters play, you create Rowan and put her into your deck. When William Rowan attacks, if you control Rowan, troops you control get plus one plus one this turn. Otherwise, move each Rowan in your deck up five spaces. If the top card of your deck is a Rowan, put her into play. So let's look at what Rowan is. Where is she? down in the created cards. So Rowan is a three cost, five five, steadfast stri swift strike. William Rowan you control have swift strike and this deals double damage. Wow. So, so while the dog is in play, your Rowan has swift strike and deals double damage. And it's a five five steadfast swift strike by itself. This, this card's phenomenal. Yeah, like, if they happen to kill your William Rowan, you th this this dog is still in your deck for you to draw at some point. Yep. Which is insane. I, I, I like that, I feel like, even just through the two colors that we've, or the two shards we've gone through so far, like, that aggressive strategies are going to be pushed and constructed more than they have been, because I feel like that's, that's like the archetype that's really been lacking in the existing constructed format. Now, one of the cool things is that the creation of the Rowan card and putting her into your deck isn't contingent on you not having a Rowan in your deck. So I play this, one goes in my deck, you kill it, I'll play another, and it puts and another another up. three cost five five into my deck, and they just each keep moving up five spaces. This this is such an awesome like just like power level aside that's definitely playable. This is such a cool use of the design space of this game. Yeah, it's just great. <laughs> and on power level, this card is just insane. Yeah, correct. N not to Definitely. mention, it's just a two cost three two. Yep. Again, you want to look at it. Are the stats something we might be interested in playing? Yeah, probably. And then like all the other text is just like gravy on the top. Yeah, man, Rowan is just sweet. All right, so that is it for the the diamond review. Uh, I have to feel like. Diamond seems much more powerful than Blood in this set so far. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if any of the other shards can kind of knock Diamond off of its throne. But between High Infinitrix, William Rowan, um, that constant that gains life and gives us thresholds, you know, a couple a couple sweet removal spells in white, 
a lot of cards that are very good uh, on curve, some limited bombs. So far, that I think I think the diamond is kind of the winner. Uh, our next video, we're going to review the wild cards next, um, and. I, I don't know for those for those of you who know me you know that I just like giant giant monsters so wild is going to be where it's at for for those troops so make sure you stay tuned and check out uh, our next video where we're going to review the wild troops or the wild cards in the set plenty of troops make sure you stick yep. around.